Okay, this is a review for the Sony NWZX300. Um, this was sent to me maybe about two weeks ago. Um, how this kind of came about is a unique story that I guess I'll get into at another time, but I'm a, I'm a, let's go back a little bit. First of all, too long, didn't read. Do I recommend you buy this thing? I do. I think that Sony has finally come back to where they were. If, I don't think they've ever been here, to be honest with you. Sony kind of invented the personal audio player, and then they went, if you, if you, if you check Wikipedia Walkman and you read through and look at some of the devices that they created and, and, and the proprietary standards and the, the at track and the, just, a, just a mess. I, I forgot why I walked away from Walkman until I checked Wikipedia yesterday and remembered again why. They're just a chaotic company. Um, let's be honest here. Um, the iPod... This is a Nano. It's old. I got this one because it's got the WM740, uh, 470 Wolfson DAC in it. It's one of the more famous ones, and I, so I kept it. I checked it online. This was ranked, I know, number three or four on the best-sounding eye devices ever made, so I kept it, and I checked the little number down there, and it's the, it's the same one. It's got the Wolfson DAC in it, um, and I liked it. And uh, this kind of took over. You could do this with one hand while you're talking to your friend. You could navigate the whole thing. Um, you could put whatever you really want on it, um, AC, MP3, everybody had MP3s at this time. At, at the beginning, if I'm correct now, I believe that one of the reasons I didn't get a Sony a long time ago was because I couldn't put MP3 players, MP3 files on it, which was like everywhere at the time. And I just thought, that must be a joke. And it really wasn't. There was a version of the Walkman at when uh, the iPod was coming out. That didn't you couldn't put MP3s on it, and this was before there were lots of like editing software you, where you could change the. You were really kind of fucked, um, and not long after that, if you think, uh, can you talk about the device? Hey, blow off, man. This is my channel. Um, Sony. Around that time, Sony got into the computers, and they released something called the Sony Vio, and I, it was the first computer I ever bought in my life. I, I make my computers now. I build them because it's fun. But at that time, I didn't know shit about computers, so I got a Sony Vio, and man, everything needed, a, to connect a Sony something to another thing needed a special cable. And of course, you got to buy it, so Sony was making lots of money with the stuff that goes with their stuff. You got a Bravia TV, and you want to connect it to a, a, a different brand DVD, you need a special cable, you... Everything is proprietary, and the, I just got worse and worse and worse, and finally Sony had a fiasco where they... Now, keep in mind, this is a company that makes blank DVDs, and then they also are Sony BGM, and they, they make movies. They got so paranoid about you copying movies onto the blank DVDs that they sold you that they put root kits, what turned out to be root kits, on it so that they could block it, and the government computers got infected by this fucking company's paranoia, because they were worried about you copying the music that's on their disc and you were going to copy it using their disc copier onto their blank discs. This is too fucked up to even make up. It's a true story. Sony did that and I just said, man, Sony, fuck Sony. I'm done with Sony. Fuck them. I'm out of there. Um, this is the kind of video that doesn't get put on official channels and uh, because of my language. I, I give you shit not. Um... And then a funny thing started to happen. First, I, you know, I'm listening to IMs and I'm, I'm, I'm listening to that stuff. And I ended up with a, a set called the EX-1000s. I've heard, talked about them a thousand times. And uh, they sounded fantastic. They sounded different from everything I'd ever heard before. They sounded absolutely... They, the fit was fucked. The cable, of course, is proprietary. It's a nightmare for even Pateric. He doesn't want to do them because they, they're so fucking hard. Um, and... Uh, yeah, but I loved them so much, and I got the tips put on them, and I, I, th th this is the, this is them. They got ASG tips, which is like a gag because that company screwed me. I, I bought these tips myself. Um, it's got a mini adapter, so I can connect this to a, um, I can connect this to a, whatever I want. So right now it's it's a two point five that's going into the Sony Balanced. I can change this and connect this. And put a single ended tail on it, so I don't need to get new cables. I just this is the genius of Pateric. I'll put his link in like I usually do. Um, and then I'm thinking, I got a Sony, yeah, well, fuck, I, that's, 
It's pretty kick-ass. A lot of the other stuff that they made in the same year, I thought the EX was outstanding. And, uh, and I got a Sony. I'm customized. I didn't think much of it. Then I'm listening to over ears. I go into a shop in Japan. I live in Japan. I'm listening to HD Sennheiser's, all kinds of stuff. The guy behind the counter that owns the shop, the headphone shop owner, hands me these and says, listen to these. And I listened to them. And he pulled out his own set and because it's what he listened to. He had a Woo audio amp attached to a HD 800 before the S series came out. And that was his display thing on his desk to make him look, I guess, smart. But actually... He listened to the MA900, which he had himself customized. I don't know who did it. It wasn't balanced, though, I recall that, and it didn't have the removable tail like this one's got on it. So I can do the same thing that I do with the EX. I can go single and I can go... And anyway, it's a Sony. And he, he, in not so many words, said, you know, at this level and beyond, you know, it, it, it's a hobby. It, it's that people like to spend their money and... Uh, and this has got 70 millimeters. That's a big area that covers your ear. And it's got a base lens, which is supposed to keep the base from taking over the diaphragm. And it, and it works fantastic. And in fact, one of the things against the MA900 is it doesn't have sub bass. That's bullshit because I love sub bass and I love the MA900s. I love them so much I got them balanced. I sent them to Michigan. Um, all my gears have been to Michigan because that's where Pateric is. So it, what's going on now is Sony has weaseled their way back into my life in and I didn't even realize it. Not only did they weasel in, I'm paying to ship these things to America from Japan to get them customized because I'm leveling up because I'm just simply not hearing better than this. And I'm not the kind of guy that's going to buy new because it's new. I'm going to buy new because it's better. And I'm not hearing better. I customize it. This, they'll never make better than this. I, I, God, the, 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 the Campfire series. This is better than that. Come on, give me a break. I, I spent the money to customize it. I, I heard him. I know it. Um, the one area, so we're seven minutes in. Uh, a lot of you have thumbed down. A lot of you have checked out. Um, the one area of my audio life where Sony hadn't gotten into me yet was uh, audio players because in the time where I had you know, rejected their bullshit with no MP3s on their Walkman. That's a true story. I don't care what anybody says. I, I saw it where you couldn't put MP3s on one of their Walkman. At that time, it was a consideration, and I just said, what the fuck? All my music is MP3s. That was before I went flack in DSD. Uh, I don't even have MP3s anymore, but that's all I had at that time. And uh, you, I can't do that. I got I to gotta convert it to your proprietary AT, A-Track, or whatever the fuck that was. No way. I'm out of there. Um, I come back, and the, I checked maybe three years ago when I started getting into personal audio, and they had a few, and I'm using it at the audio store here in Japan, and it, it's like an Android hybrid. It's a fucking mess, man. It's it's, a, it's just a mess. I could change the language on some of them at the, sh at the stores, shockingly, and uh, they were just a nightmare. And I'm okay with Android because my, I got a Samsung phone, but the, the Sony was just fucked. So... And interestingly enough, the Apple stuff, when you walked into a Japanese audio store, it would be like right when you walk in, and then all of the cell phones would be right here. And this stuff, not this one, but the older version, like three years ago, four years ago, this was way in the back, and you're lucky if they had a live one because they were usually dummy plastic ones because the sales were shit. They, 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 the market was gone. There's something called a paradigm shift, and that's when something that's one thing turns into another. Um, two, two examples of that given in college. One of them was... Uh, Watches. Watches were made by the Swiss and in Europe, 80% uh, back in like the 1920s or so. Of the whole world, 80% of the watches were made uh, in Europe. And then in 1974 or 5, 80% of the watches had been made in Japan, not China, Japan at that time. That's a paradigm shift. Um, and that had to do with the, the Swiss not thinking people with low income needed watches because we're, who cared where they wanted to be. Japanese thought everybody needs a watch because everybody needs to be on time, the whole hive national thing. And a boom, Japan's got 80%. They totally flipped the market from what it used to be. It used to be the Swiss and their people, and then it turned into an Asian-dominated thing like that. To flip the script on that, Walkman had the market. They had it. They created it. They had it. And then they lost it. And then the paradigm shift was the Apple. Apple took over. Even Japanese have Apple. Having a Walkman in Japan is not cool. Having an Apple is cool. 
Having a Samsung phone in Japan is not cool. Having a Sony Xperia is not cool. Having an iPhone X is very cool. Um, the import stuff, they've totally taken over the market. Now I'm 10 minutes and 2 seconds in. I'm going to tell you about this fucking thing because you waited 10 minutes. Um, it is perfect in its size. It is... Uh, it is strong. It is a full aluminum chassis. It's got the buttons if you want to use them to use the device. Let me go ahead and turn this thing on. It's it's one finger friendly if you want. Tap into here. Tap into here. Tap into here. Tap into here. And I'm good to go. And if I want to do other stuff, I swipe up. Swipe down. Swipe to the left. Swipe to the right. This has got a... Basically what this is, this UI is genius, and this is why I'm, I'm a big fan of it, and I'm going to surprise you with something. This is basically like a home screen, and you can go up, you can go left, you can go right, or you can go down. It's a centered screen with four directions. If you select direct off, so I turn that off, then you come into a new series of screens, which would be like the EQ. The EQ is pretty cool, actually, because if I touch the band that I want, so I push adjust, and then I, I can up or minus depending on the band that I select it's actually pretty cool um, I've also got something called DSE HX so this is if you've got files that are slightly lower quality it's their own way of kind of leveling up they'll never let go of trying to mess with your files um, DC phase linearizer um, this is actually pretty cool and I it's on because I used it before um, this is something that um, makes the low frequency phase characteristics of the player closer to a traditional analog amplifier. It works. I like it. Um, and then we got dynamic normalizer. I guess this is volume differences between songs, so this will keep it going. Now, these are option to you if you select direct off. Otherwise, if you go direct, you're basically going to have the song, you're going to have the tracks, you're going to have kind of instructions. You're going to have your main menu right here. So you basically got a top, bottom, left, right navigation system, and it's one hand friendly. Now let's get to the sound because we're 12 minutes in now. Um, it's not neutral because I, I don't like Stone Code neutral because that doesn't sound natural. Why do I like the MA900s? Because they've got this. You see my fingers right here? That's how big the, the hole is right there because when you go to a live show, you've got people standing around you and you hear the music. If you've got a HD800 over your head, you're blocking out most of the outside sound, and if you listen to a live thing, it, there's something lacking. It's not lacking with MA900s because I get the outside noise. These are not something you wear on a train, but if you're, if you're listening to 70s and you're listening to Peter Frampton or Leonard Skinner or something recorded live, I don't think anything beats these, really. They're, they weigh like a feather. It's 70 millimeters. The bass is not that bad. Th this is better than the stuff that was hanging on the rack that cost over $1,000, in my opinion. That it was a Sony, it didn't even cross my mind at the time. Um, so Sony's gone through. The question here is, did Sony do this because of a of a evolution in their thinking, or is this just a lucky like these? So these came out, I think, in 2011. Absolutely, absolutely fantastic. Absolutely graphite housing, um, 16 millimeter. I believe it's a PET standard mylar um, copper coil um, motor structure, like a speaker in a in, in your car. Just perfect, and then they they went other directions because new they every year Sony has this thing to like do something different. Is this the beginning of Sony taking back the the industry, or is this just a lucky two thousand seventeen eighteen hit? I you know I don't know because this just came out, but to give you an idea of how impressed I was with this, I went out and got this, which is basically. Um, this would be the WM1A, which uses the same system um, for navigation as that does. And I liked it. So, but I wanted a bigger screen. Is this thing sound $300 better than this? F fuck no, it does not. Um, but I like a big screen. I'm a screen slut. So I wanted a bigger screen. Um, it's like a typhoon outside. That's wind. Holy shit. Um, so this thing is so impressive. It said, man, go have another listen to that because I didn't pay that much attention to it the last time because I was, 
I was down on Sony. Uh, it gave me kind of a prejudice. I, I was listening to this because I someone said, please do. And I, to give an honest opinion, got to listen to it. And the more I listened to it, the more I thought, shit, it, I'm, I'm part of their, their ecosystem, man. And I didn't know it. And they, they've, they've got me again. Um, and uh, went out and got this one. People say, oh, you like free stuff? I do. And I, I pay for stuff, too. That's how that goes. Um, but this would never have happened if I hadn't had this in my possession for longer. I had the gold one for two weeks, but that was related to my school, and somebody wanted to send somebody and do private lessons. It was almost like a bribe thing, so I wasn't cool with that. That's got nothing to do with audio. That's got to do with relationships in Japan and how complicated they are and tatemai and stuff. So I didn't really put much mind to the WM1 series. Price was expensive, and uh, the connection with the story was not comfortable. This thing gets sent to me. Um, I'm First thing I'm thinking is this This is what they should have done in 1995, at least in design-wise. This, this is beautiful. This is high quality. Got it all over. It's got a balanced output, so you're going to need either the 4.4 Pentacon, which is this connection, instead of the... Um, 2.5, which was the standard TRS, which is, I guess, developed maybe by Astell and Kern. I, everybody always associates them. But it's small and it got snapped easy, and people think that they needed something stronger and also for quality because of the amount of surface area that's going to touch for the, the ground and everything. They made a new standard, and it's, it's a 4.4 Pentacon, and it's really going to be in the future. So you like it or not, doesn't matter. It's coming if you like balance. So uh, to use this and balanced with stuff that I've got 2.5, I'm using a Musashino uh, adapter to listen to this and I'd recommend going balanced. People say, oh, balanced doesn't make a difference. It's got more power. You get it? Dynamics is power. Power is dynamics. If something's got more power, it's got more juice behind the driver that you're pushing it with, and it's not going to clip or do anything strange or sound like it's... Uh, thin or that's what happens when something's underpowered if you go balanced that's you're probably not going to run into that problem so people say yeah balance blah 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 that was that's because of people that that's pa system so that cross talk blah 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 hey fuck you and your fucking reality the reality is a balanced is more powerful almost always so you're going to get more power and power is dynamic so when, when you're when you're ranting about how balance is bullshit remember that most of the companies that you're you're, you're doing reviews for use balance not only that um it puts out more power so power is good power is dynamics i'd rather have more power than not so if you want to enjoy this device the best like most that offer balance i would suggest getting something like this um unless your cables are already ready for 2018 mine are not so i needed to get this um but this thing sounds fantastic the separation um the i hate to say these words because some people like twister in them and I, I i like twister me and him have a good relationship um but he uses transient response and stuff he says it a lot and i, I you know some people get that and they don't and the transient response is kind of like a speaker driver and it's starts in a stationary position it extends it stops and then it returns to the original that's basically what a hertz is stationary extension return to the normal is equals a hertz that's the that's the the bump that you see that shows it go up and go back down go below so when a speaker extends and then it comes back it goes below the original threshold and then returns to stable and that would be a full cycle that would be called a hertz a transient of a musical note is kind of like that it's the beginning the initial fundamental moment of it the harmonic extension of it and then the decay in a natural way um, would be the transients of a musical note and this does that awesome um I was so stoked to listen to this and that went and got the the other one that's how stoked i was that sony finally nailed it and i don't know what they're going to do next year because i i never know what sony's going to do this is from 2010 11 and discontinued this is from 2011 it's discontinued are they going to are they going to go crazy next year I don't know, but this is really, really, really good, and it supports all of the stuff now, and it's got the Pentacon balance, so it doesn't really matter what they do next year. I got this now, and this could last me for quite a while. 
Um, and I got the WM1A because that's going to be my main flag for quite a while now. Um, so do I recommend this? I recommend this highly um, because it sounds fantastic. It's easy to use. It's very stout. It's got a lanyard thing on the bottom so that you can connect it. Transferring music is very speedy. It's got the Sony proprietary... God, they should be called Sony Proprietary Limited Corporation or something because everything needs a special thing. They've been doing this forever, but I transferred five DSD albums faster than I could to my Hibby, the X7, or my phone. Um, so there's that. It seems to move as fast as 3.0. Spec might not say it, but it goes very fast. Um, album art is something that is, if you buy your music legitimately, you don't need to worry if you're, you know, uh, you know Less than that, then you're going to have to use something like MP3 tags sometimes to get your album art to show up. Other than that, this is without issue. It's easy to navigate. Sounds fantastic. Um, it it's, tilts a tad to the warm, but uh, I don't like Stone Cold Neutral, and I don't like Smooth either, and this doesn't do it. This is, this, they, they deem this to be something that would be popular to the masses, and I, I, I deem them to be correct. Um, I hate being part of the masses. I, I like to be a rebel, but I do like good sound, and, and they, they nailed it with this. What are they going to do next time? I don't know, so I grabbed this one now. Um, i got to thank the guy that sent this to me. I'm going to do what's instructed to me after this. Um, this is my cable right here. This goes with the other one. I recommend it. Sony. Um, they've wrapped themselves around my life like a cocoon of of horror or or happiness depending on my mood and and how I'm looking at them but I wouldn't sell these or get rid of them I've invested way too much I've invested more than these are worth into the cables and same with the EX1000 they have become much more valuable to me because of the investment I made in them um would I you know get custom cases for this one um yeah somebody this one has one actually um already got two cases coming in for the WM1A Sony uh, NWZX300, um, portable, favorite portable DAP of this year so far. Um, it's fucking January. That was a stupid thing to say. I, I'm thinking like it's um, December. That has no value to say it's the second week of January. Um, this, this is my favorite portable device. If I was going to use a DAP, if someone's going to say, can you compare it to something? Uh, I could do that, but if I was going to take this out with me and like go on a train or go someplace, there wouldn't be anything else. I'd be afraid of cracking the screen of a Hibby. Um the, the the file i don't want to get sand in, in in its holes or something this thing comes with i can put stoppers in the holes if i want uh, in all of them so that i don't get any grime or dirt or dust in them um this would be perfect for portable the way it was designed and high fidelity this is an audio file player designed to be truly portable gets the wreck it's absolutely fantastic man love it um if you don't like swearing i you know i don't know what to say um this is how I communicate. I, someone said once, your, your, your videos suck. Why don't you do a script? And then I thought, you read a script? That's all I thought when I got that mail. And that's from a famous place that just started their own video channel, though they already have a, a, um, an audio website that's like number one, two, or three on the net. A bunch of assholes. They got a new video channel. And one of them one time said, you should script yourself before you do a video. I don't script myself because... I'm fucking real. I don't have to make sure I hit my spots because I don't give a fuck. So you, you stick to scripting and people leave you fucking nine comments after six months. I'll keep doing what I do. I get 150 comments after six months. So you, you be fucking you and I'll be me. How about that? Love it. Love it. And you think, you love everything, bro? No, no. I got the next one coming and I don't love it. So it's a kind of yin-yang thing coming. But this is the love. Next one's not the love. This is the love. Recommended highly.